The first step to using the Q-Link program is to get enabled for it from eSignal. Once you've got it enabled on your eSignal account, you can download this executable program that will install the Q-Link. Double-clicking this will do two things. It will install in the program files x86 interactive data folder. It will install a Q-Link 3.1 folder, which is what we have here. And within that folder is the Q-Link.exe program. The reason I'm pointing this out is that the installation does not create a shortcut on your desktop. So the first thing I would recommend doing, because you have to start the Q-Link program each time that you want to use live links, I would recommend that you come to this folder, right click on the line that Q-Link EXE is, choose send to and desktop create shortcut and that will create a shortcut on your desktop. Once you've done that we no longer need this window and you'll have a qlink.exe shortcut on your desktop. I'm going to go ahead and start the program and starting the qlink program automatically starts the eSignal data manager. eSignal charting program is not required to be running but the data manager does have to be running in order to serve data to Q-Link, which then serves data to your Excel spreadsheet. And that brings me to the second part of what gets installed. When you install the Q-Link program, when you run the installer, it will put an add-in into your Excel. So you'll have this custom toolbar. You'll see an add-in for interactive data RTD. And it also installs its own custom menu, which has basically the same toolbar, just much easier to read and use buttons. Now that we've got our Q-Link running and we've got our toolbar here in Excel, let's take it for a spin. So I'm going to click on cell B one. I'm going to click on this icon for quote cell to add a quote, single quote to that cell. And it gives me a dialog box in which I can insert the symbol. So I'm going to match the symbol that I've got in A1. And then I'm going to click on the drop down for shares. And I'm going to choose the last price, which is going to be a live update. Click OK, and I have a live quote. And notice in the formula bar we have a syntax, ES quote, AA in quotes, and then the last. I'm going to go back to the quote cell and notice this checkbox here. That is changing the syntax. So the full syntax is RTD, real-time data, ES for e-signal RTD, I suppose, and then uh, several arguments. I really don't see any reason to use the full syntax, and I would use the short RTD form for all my quotes, but there may be a reason that I have not yet learned. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the short form. So we've got ES quote and then in parentheses the symbol in the last. And great. We can go and add another column, another quote. And this time, let's choose the volume. So volume, OK. Market just opened uh, 15 minutes ago, so volume isn't very big yet. And that is step one. Of quotes. Now step two is where it gets cool. If you've used DDE and a spreadsheet, you know that 
it doesn't allow you to make references to cells in the in the DDE syntax in the formula. You have to specify everything literally. But in this real-time data, I can come over here and substitute cell A1. Uh, click the checkbox, and you see I've still got my formula working. My, my link is still displaying the price. I'm going to change this formula as well. Now watch this. I'm going to do a control D to fill the formula down for all these other symbols. And we now have individual quotes live updating quotes, real-time data for each of these symbols and we didn't have to customize them for the symbol, we just used the formula. That's cool. And if I change one of the symbols, the quotes automatically update without having to change the DDE formula. So if for no other reason RTD is way better than DDE for this. In our last example, we changed the symbol based on the putting a formula for referring to a, a cell reference for the symbol versus having to put the hard code the symbol into the quote. Now the next step may be obvious, maybe not, but I've set up a cell over here at H1 and I've typed last into it. And then in my formula reference, I've put an absolute reference using the dollar signs to cell H1. And then I've copied that formula with the absolute reference down my list. So now, if I want to change all of these from the last price to the low price of the day, all I have to do is change last to low over here in H1, and they all update to the low. or the high, or the volume, and you see they match. So, you know, this opens up a lot of possibilities for you in the way you use live quotes in your spreadsheets. Now let's move to the table feature of Q-Link. We need a list of symbols separated by commas. I've created a list here and if I click on the quote table icon, you see I've already entered that in the symbol list. You can just type a list in here. You've got an editor that you can pop up that allows you to add, type and add to the list. You can remove and edit that list in various ways here. Once you've got a list of symbols, I recommend using the show header, which will put the symbols, a list of the symbols on the left hand side of the table. If you don't use this, you won't have symbols showing. And uh, in addition to the show header, I recommend you use the use reference, and that will then make the fields refer to the symbol cells rather than the hard coding the symbols in the references themselves, in these formulas themselves. I'll, that'll become clear in just a moment. On the fields, you've got an editor that allows you to select fields that you want. If you want to add, for example, a 52-week high to the list, it adds it to the list over here. We'll click OK, and you see now it's on this list. Again, I recommend using the show header, and you can use the reference, which will then refer to the headers in the formulas. Use the short form, click OK and it's building our table of links. So these are all now live links. I'll click on this one. You see in the formula bar it refers to B12, the, the reference, refers to the C 
symbol cell. And then the field, the net change, refers to is referred to this way by a reference. ES field ID, and then the field ID is in cell C11. That's similar to what we had over here with volume, and we referred to the cell. The difference being that in, in this case we're using field ID, and we can um, it can be done either way. For example, high, you could replace this ES field ID C11 with a reference to this cell D11 for the high like this and that would work but if you did it for net change it would not work so uh, the way to find out what if you want to eliminate this particular syntax and go with just a field reference you would need to go with the quote cell build it for the change and see how it's referred to so for example Make that, I can make that clearer. Here we have a quote for XLE using the net change. I'm going to go right under it. I'm going to input a quote cell for XLE with the net change field using the short form. And notice the difference. In the formula, it is now using the word change rather than net change. So that is the difference in the syntax. If you used simply change here that would be fine but if you refer to this field by if you took out this ES field ID syntax and just referred to C11 this would not work so that's just a minor difference I'm going to delete that extra quote out of there and since we've used these references we can now change symbols over here on the left hand side for example if I want to change XLE to SPY I can do that in my and it does it's not context sensitive as you see I've got my caps lock on and I forgot that so I had typed all lowercase so it's not context sensitive but it changes all the quotes based on my changing the symbol what if we change one of the columns what if I want to change 52 week high to 52 week low well let's try retyping that that's not going to work turn off caps lock and it liked that. And the way we would again find that out is uh, go to the quote cell and look at the list here and you would type a new value. So headline count. Uh, well how about last size? That's going to be better. So we can come up here and type last last size with the checkbox and because it's using the reference to the ES field ID I11 that worked if I were to simply refer to I11 and I'll edit this and take out So now we just have I11 in the reference, and you notice it's blank. It doesn't understand last size. So it's important to just be consistent in your use of the syntax within the real-time data links. If you're going to build the table use the, and use the headers, then use the, the links that, uh, the more complicated syntax that has the, uses the ES field ID. Next, we're going to take a look at the historic information. Now we turn to historic data. And fasten your seatbelts because this is going to get a little bit more difficult. There's some Neville in the details, as we say. 
So I've gone to another sheet on my worksheet and I have entered a symbol in cell B1. I'm going to go to cell B2. I'm going to choose historic cell from the toolbar and I get this pop-up. You notice that this is a very simple setup. It doesn't have questions for using header or don't and so forth. It's just got the use short or long form. We're going to continue to use the short form. It wants to know what the symbol is, the interval we're going to use daily. That's going to be historical one day by day. The field, we've also got the list of fields. It's a short list, but the date, high, low, last, and so on. So I'm just going to go with last, which would be the closing price. And for date, when I click the drop down, I get a calendar. I'm going to look, today's date is the 10th of November. I'm going to look at the first day prior to that. It was a trading day, which is the 7th. And I'm going to click OK. We've got a quote. It is, I've checked it, it's accurate. And this is the syntax for historical quotes. Now, like we saw with the live quotes, it is, because it's real-time data, you can substitute references for these hard-coded values. So, for example, if you wanted to, hide, to change the hard-coded symbol D, to cell B1, and in this case I'm going to click on the B1, hit my F4 key and make it an absolute reference, and click OK. Now I've got hard-coded reference to this cell rather than a particular symbol. So I can change the symbol and get a different quote. I'm going to go back, and we're back to 7389, which is our Friday close. And similarly, I could add more cells, change with different dates, and I could build a list of a historical list from the most recent date, going backward in time if I want to, using this historic cell toolbar. All right, let's see how we could build a list of historical quotes, starting with, with using the historical cell formula. So let's start out and start with a date. Because of the way Excel does autofill, I'm going to start with a, my oldest date, and then I'm going to autofill down to today's date. Now I've got a list of dates. Now I need to sort that list of dates. So I'm going to resort that list of dates. And then I'm going to move them to my first column and widen it out. Now, I need to make my formula reference my date. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my formula and highlight the date item. Click on cell A1 where my newest date is. And I'm going to click the checkbox. And that is a quote for today because it's today's date. So that's going to be a live quote. Now, so I've got this formula referencing an absolute reference to the cell B1, which is the symbol, and then I've got a rep relative reference to my date. So I can now highlight this down, control D for fill down, and I now have quotes that are referencing those particular dates. And you'll notice that the days of the weekends are blank. And this will lead us into using the historical table item to build a list 
of dates. So here on sheet two, I've created a list of individual historic cells similar to what I did uh, in the last segment on sheet three, where we created a list and sorted it backwards and then filled the formula down. And I've done this for a shorter list of dates from the current date back to November 5th. And you can see the relative references and so forth. And then, starting in this cell, I've built a historic table using the same symbol and a date range. So there's several blocks of information here. I've used the daily time frame using just the last and using a date range of 11.10 to 11.5 show header and vertical. And by choosing that, the header in this case uh, on the dates is the date itself. And so what we have now is a date range that excludes the blank days that of the weekend. But also, interestingly enough, it does not display a date for the, the last date or the earliest date that I selected, 11.5. So I'm going to go back one more day, choose OK. So uh, an idiosyncrasy of the historic table is that using the, the daily fill the way we've done it with a date range, you need to add an extra day to get the same results. The, the earliest day that you select is not going to be displayed. So, so now let's build another table starting in the cell H1 using most of the same information daily and I'm going to use a day count instead and let's just put in 10 days and build the cell or build the table. And so what we have in place of dates is a date index starting with index of zero for the current date and one previous date, two previous days, and so forth. And you see it matches down to as far as we've gone here. And it looks at current day and so many trading days versus previous dates. So basically identical to what we did with the date range. If we want to expand our table a little bit, pretty this up, we can we'll start by clearing it, just delete it, and go back to the historic table. I'm going to use a date range again and go back a little bit into October. So we've got a little bit more data and then I'm going to add a couple data items. So that should be enough. Double checking my Oh, and on our data items, we want to add the header so that we see these labels on the columns. So click OK, and it builds the table. And once again, we've got our, we need to widen this a little bit to display the dates properly. But we've got our symbol, the last high and low, and these are historic quotes going back for 10 trading days. So the difference between using a fixed date range, as pretty as it is, and using the count as I believe is that if you use the fixed date, it's only going to use those dates and tomorrow 
whatever date is at the top of this list is going to be the same date at the top of the list. So it's a sort of a dead list. It'll it'll slip farther and farther back in time. If you're using these this count, you'll have an indexed list. So this is always today, this is always yesterday, and so forth. So if you were, for example, trying to calculate a uh, moving average of the true range or the average true range over a period of time, you could use this sort of a table to perform a calculation of the true range for each day and then average that. And that would, each new day, would the list would update to reflect the most recent data versus having a list of calendar dates that doesn't change. Now let's turn our attention to intraday data. So if we click the historic table, we'll keep the same symbol, but let's change the interval to intraday. Let's change this to one minute. And let's change our list of fields, open, high, low, and last, and let's add the bar time, put that in the first column, click OK, and let's give it 100, 100 count or 100 minutes, click OK, and it builds our table. So we, I should have pointed out when we were looking at the table, when you choose intraday, the dates and date range is grayed out. You don't have a choice of anything but count. There we go. It incremented. So the current bar is the zero bar and everything moved down by one row. So you can see that if you're trying to build some sort of a live average, this is the, the structure that you want to use with the, uh, the count, the bar count rather than dates, even if you're using daily data. I hope this has not only given you a, a big head start on using QLink, but has also stimula stimulated your imagination as to what you can do with QLink. Before we go, I've got one last little surprise for you. I've added a sheet for here. And I wanted to show you that QLink can be used to generate last prices for pairs. So I've built out a, a, just a basic spreadsheet here with a symbol A, symbol B, a factor, and it may not be the right factor. It's just uh, an example. And the way we would have called the pair a few years ago, I'm not sure if that's still the operative name of a pair, but it'll do for this example. The e-signal formula for this pair, where you would be trading 200 shares of Lowe's for each 100 shares of Home Depot, is HD space minus space to space times space LOW. So there has to be a space on both sides of the operators and between the, the stocks. And then if we go to the quote cell, any symbol will do because we're going to change it. So we click OK to get the last. Now it is important that we get the last price here in the field because that's really the only thing that's going to be accurate about a pair. We click OK and we get the last price. All right. Then we come back up to our formula and we make a relative reference. So we double click the D to highlight it. We click the cell that's got the e-signal formula for the pair in it. Click the check mark. And after just a little bit of thinking, there is the last price of the pair. So it's not too big of a stretch to see how you could build a spreadsheet that would track a number of pairs on the last price 
for those and then possibly generate alerts for you or whatever you want to do. But it is possible to have direct real-time quotes or pairs using QLink.